it is time for your second lesson in GarageBand, and today I'm gonna to be talking about editing. We're gonna talk about splitting tracks, a couple of the hidden tools that you need to know where they are if you wanna edit successfully in GarageBand, and a couple other helpful things to help you navigate the screen in general. All right, so let's get right to it. What you're looking at here is just a project that I quickly built up using the loops directly out of the GarageBand loop library, so nothing too special there, okay? But first, let's just listen to this thing so you understand what we're working with. Get it? Pretty simple. Now, what you should have noticed is that in this drum track, the first four bars here at the top, represented by these numbers, right? Here's bar number one, bar number two, three, and four. First four bars had no hi-hat. Second four bars had a hi-hat running. Okay, so that little sound is the hi-hat. When it started looping back around to the beginning, it was no more hi-hat time, right? So that's not great. We wanna hear those hi-hats. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this track. There's two ways to do this. My favorite way is the easiest, I think. I'm simply gonna hit Command and T, and now this is in two independent sections. Now let me back this up and just show you there's another way to do it. If you come up to Edit and you go Split Regions at Playhead, boom, you get that keeping in mind that wherever the cursor is, that is considered the playhead, okay? So now, what I wanna do is come over here to the right end of this field, and you see these two tools that have appeared now. So this one at the bottom will enable me to pull it left and right until there's no more recording left, right? So as we approach the end of the eighth bar, there's nothing for me to pull to the right. However, I can pull it to the left. But what I wanna do is loop it. So I'm gonna take the tool at the top of this, where you see the little loopy thing, and I'm just gonna stretch this out for another eight bars, okay? So we're gonna pull that all the way out there, another eight bars, okay? So now, I want this piano part, which is at the bottom, and I want this to be eight bars as well. Now there's a few different ways I could do this. Again, I could grab this loop tool and I could loop it all the way out. That's option number one. The other things you could do are, you could simply you know, select this with a command and C. I could copy it, put the cursor wherever I want, and then paste it in. That's another way to do it. Third way to do it, and what I usually do if I'm trying to copy a track like this, I will hit the Option key on my keyboard, click down here, and drag to the right, and boom, when I let go, while I'm still holding the Option key down, it will drop a copy. One of the nice things uh, about not looping here is that I have the ability to do this, right? I can still left and right stretch this without affecting the rest of the loop. So let me show you what I'm talking about there because if I, let's get rid of this and let's loop it up, right? Uh, if I was to change, say like this end of it, it changes the entire loop, right? And you can see that. So sometimes, you know, you make a little move and you're like, oh, you know, you accidentally edit something and then your whole loop gets messed up. So sometimes, depending on the case, I will just, what I said, you know, option, drag, boom. Now I have this, okay? So let's listen to this again. And I'm gonna turn on the cycling feature, which is here at the top. There are a couple ways to turn this on. You can click the button here. You can either click the yellow bar or with a command, with a C, you can turn that on and off. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it uh, just to a little bit before the hi-hat start, and then we can just hear how this stretches out. And uh, why don't we take this one too, and option, drag, and now we have the whole thing. Let's listen to this. So now it's gonna start over again with the hi-hat. Right, you hear that difference? Let me just show you again. Uh, so I can bring this back. Let's take this guy out and just show you what it sounds like without those hi-hats there.
right? It's sort of jarring. You you really want those hi hats to continue since in the first four bars they weren't there. That really feels like an intro. So you could say you know like continue on with the hi hats and uh, the vocals start, for example. Okay. So I'm just going to delete this and I am going to again I'm going to loop that out for eight bars. Okay. So. There is something you should also know about these hidden tools here, okay? So in this case, um, since this one's looped, now the hidden tool that is available is only the looping tool. Down here, I still have a looping tool and the left and right stretching tool. But if you are using the automation, okay? Let me just push A on my keyboard to turn that on, okay? And if I click here, so now you can turn automation on and off, right? Um, but one of the things that happens to these tools while you're in automation mode is that they disappear completely. So, right? So if I come down here, the only thing I can do is stretch this left and right. And the only thing, again, I can do here is, is work with the loop tool. But point is, is that those tools that you had before are hidden and that is because we are using the automation view and that's not what we would be using while we're working on automation, right? So to get those tools back, simply push the A button on your keyboard and go back to main mode and you have these tools again, okay? So let's talk about automation a little bit because there's something I do wanna share with you about that. So again, I'm gonna either come up here, I'm just gonna click on here, turn this automation on. I'm going to drop a few random points here just for uh, the example of it all, okay? So these are volume automation points and this will you know, make the volume go down and up and down and up. One thing that's very nice about GarageBand when you're editing and you're moving things around, okay, is you can get these things to move, the automation will move with my field as I move it left and right, as you can see. To get this to happen, you have to come up here to the mix control, and you're gonna have this one selected. Move track automation with regions. Pretty basic. Just wanted to mention it to you. This is a very, very handy thing. One last thing I wanna show you about editing is that you can do this in groups. So I'm gonna turn this automation off. And you could, if I wanted to, I can select all of these. Again, with a Command and T, I can split them, right? And so then, you know, say I just wanted to get rid of that. Boom, there you go. This is really nice if you've done, you know, a bunch of different vocal takes and the ends aren't nice and clean. You know, you want to keep things really well organized in GarageBand, especially as your projects get bigger and bigger and bigger. It makes it a lot easier to visually identify those parts if they're nicely, you know, cleaned up and the ends are all even. That kind of stuff makes it a lot easier to navigate a big, complex project. So remember, you want to keep those ends clean. The other thing, if you have a lot of dead space, like say, for example, uh, between verses, uh, you know, like you end a verse and the chorus might take a little bit to start. If you have dead air there, cut those areas out. And I mean cut. So you're going to split, you know, uh, let's just show you. Like, so let's just say I want to cut out this bar. I'm going to come here. I'm going to come here. Another command T, select this one, delete. Okay. So if that was an empty section of, air, you know, recording, like nothing was happening, Cut those things out. It will make your projects run easier and more quickly and not bogged down. Even though there's nothing recorded there, GarageBand is still referencing the file that is sitting in the stem file folder. Um, so if there's nothing there, give your computer a break and get rid of it because it's not important. Plus, uh, there might be like a car sound or a door sound or your dog barking sound in that little area. You never know what happens in those dead areas of uh, recordings, but stuff happens. So it's good, to, it's good to just sort of cut it out and get rid of it, okay? So that's basically it. That is really editing 101 on GarageBand. It's a very powerful little program. I know people give us a lot of heat for using it, but it is a wonderful program that absolutely positively can give you professional sounding results if you know what you're doing. As always, I thoroughly appreciate you guys watching my videos. If you like this and the videos that I make, hey, do me a huge favor. It really does help if you guys hit the subscribe button. It really, really does help my channel. And also I do have a Patreon page where those guys get exclusive videos made for them, much more in depth uh, mix videos. Uh, and stuff comes out early on the GarageBand Patreon page. And uh, I think that's about it. GarageBand and beyond Patreon page. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> All right, you guys have an awesome day. I'll talk to you later. Peace and love.